everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike here, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Friday, April the 19th. It's race number nine at Keeneland, the grade three double dog dare for fillies and mares going a mile and a 16th. And I triple dog dare you to pick the winner of this race. Uh, please send your comments on the Daily Race Inform YouTube channel. We'd like to hear your picks for the double dog dare. Here's the field. It's a pretty competitive group. Scylla, the number three, goes out for Bill Mott. It's your typical Judmont, regally bred filly that's done little wrong. All potential at this point uh, for the three. Morning line favorite here on a pretty significant move up in class. Dan, I mean, this I guess this race could have come up a little tougher, but um, it's not going to be easy for Scylla to just you know show up here and win this race. She's going to have to take a step forward. It will be her stakes debut. She is facing a graded stakes winner drawn to the inside in Raging Sea, one of a few in this race returning off of a little bit of a layoff. We throw up our time form U.S. pace projector and consider it a mile and a 16th at Keeneland. It's the short stretch. The number four love showed a lot of early speed last year for trainer Brendan Walsh and Godolphin. We have not seen her since the summer, but I would expect her to be fresh and I'd expect her to be up front. She's got a lot of speed. Um, she's looked really good winning her first three starts uh, last year as a four-year-old dad, but that campaign was over early and she's got a very long layoff to deal with here. It looks like she's got tons of potential, though. Looks like a true speed type. Hidden Connection does have some early foot, but she's more of a tracker, while Saddle Up Jesse is more of an adaptable sort. If the pace is very, very slow, she can get to the lead. If this pace is unexpectedly fast, the two Queen of Missoula, one of the bigger prices in the race, owns the Time Form U.S., best late pace figure let's kick things off with raging see you finished off for 2023 campaign in very good form with this win in the grade three comely against fellow three-year-old fillies she beat a good group the third place finisher honor d lady would return to win the grade three royal delta at gulfstream with a 94 buyer yeah it's a it's a pretty good field here and she ran really really well in here dan um, the pace wasn't super fast she sat off as she came wide on the turn and that's uh, Julia Shining, who's making a late run at her there. And, you know, it, it looked like maybe she was in trouble late there, but she was never letting that horse get by her. I, I really liked that performance. I thought her prior two starts, both at nine furlongs also, one of them on this track. I thought she looked really good winning those races too. Um, she was good last year, and she has the potential to be even better as a four-year-old now, Dan. She's dangerous in here. You know, while I liked her first-level allowance win at Keeneland over the sloppy track two starts back, I did think the Cumley was her coming-out party. She did beat a couple of next-out winners. We mentioned one of them. We'll see what we get. First off of the layoff for Chad Brown, cutting back slightly to a mile and a 16th, but she's a bit more tactical than it might seem on paper. Queen of Missoula is a horse coming into this race in very good form. She has won three of her last four starts, and while her last two wins came over the turfway to Pita. She has one on dirt at Keeneland, winning a hundred grand maiden claimer over course and distance last fall. Yeah, those, those last two wins, not only on a different surface, they're going a mile and a quarter. So they're going to drop her all the way back here. Um, and she doesn't have a ton of early speed. I will say though, I know, you know, the win at Keeneland would suggest she can handle the dirt. I know it didn't come back fast, man. They were walking on the pace in there. She was last she came with a pretty good finish in there. I mean, I think she's better than she looks on paper. Well, she does have a very strong kick. Now, she did get a setup last time out in that mile yeah, and a quarter race. The race flow was certainly in her favor. But as you mentioned, she overcame a slow pace against weaker horses. She'll have to do it against tougher here. But at a price, she still has some upside. And maybe she can liven up your single race exotics. The three is Scylla. This is your morning line favorite. She is a daughter of Tappet out of the very good mare, Close Hatches. She won her first two starts like breaking sticks. And then off of the layoff while she was beaten at odds on she ran okay in this allowance race at Gulfstream going a one turn mile again it was a race that didn't have a lot of pace she finishes second maybe you're a little bit disappointed she doesn't get it done at odds on but it is her first start off of a lengthy layoff and maybe she just needed it maybe she looks a little like her uh older full brother uh Tacitus in this race Dan looks like she's gonna win <laughs> oh wow. Can't get by. settles for a terrible second in there um I'm being a little facetious there. I mean, it was a long layoff. She got a head in front there, and the horse that wound up beating her had a huge experience. I think she's won six times yeah. now. She's, she was already a stakes winner on the way into that race. So it's not a terrible loss, and it was a move forward as far as figures go. And I, I just like her running style, too. I think she has plenty of tactical speed. Um, so I can see a good trip coming from for her in here. I think she's going to be good. I'm not saying I would take her at the 8-5 to five morning line. The number four is Loved, and she returned off of a lengthy layoff to post three facile victories, and that led to a start in the grade three Molly Pitcher, a race in which she showed her usual early speed. 
She just didn't have it in the stretch, faltering to finish fourth behind a pretty good horse in the beaten favorite search results. She would come back to win the grade three Locust Grove at Churchill with a 98 buyer speed figure. Now this layoff has to be a little bit concerning, especially for a mare that's already missed a year prior in her career. Uh, but supposedly she's been working in company with Walsh. She's very talented, pretty mischievous, and she could be the controlling speed. I mean, that's what it, that's how it looks on paper. I mean, just when you go back, especially when you go back and watch those four starts last year, I mean, she she not only looks good winning, but she's fast. And I think she is making the lead in this race. Dan. And the Molly pitcher, I don't think it's that disappointing when you go back and watch the replay because they had to send her to make the lead in there. She went fast. She was under pressure the entire way. And finally, a couple of closers came uh, late to win that race. But I don't know. I, I thought she ran fine in there. Her other three starts were really impressive. If she's ready off the layoff, I think she's going to be hard on this field. When the number five saddle up, Jesse shows up with her A race, she usually displays a very strong turn of foot, which creates separation from her competition and makes her tough to catch. We saw that when she won the carousel at Laurel four starts back. We saw that when she received a brilliant ride from Manny Franco to take them gate to wire in the heavenly prize at Aqueduct going a one turn mile. What happened last time out in the Azari? Was it simply too tough a spot? Did she not like the wet track? Because she just didn't run up to par. Yeah, she, she was bad in there. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, Ben, I don't think you could say that she was in over her head either. I don't think that was a super strong field. Uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, she just didn't fire a good shot there. And even more concerning than that now, Dan, is we've already had several runbacks out of the, that Azari. They all ran terrible. I know a bunch of them came back in the, in the grade one apple blossom and were nowhere but even comparative has came back and it seemed like an easier spot in New York last week. And she was awful in that race. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm going to lean away from those horses exiting the Azari, including Saddle Up Jesse, who I like as a horse. The number six hidden connection ran second in this race last year, coming off of a dull running line in the Azari. She skipped this year's Azari. She went off favorite in the grade three Houston's Ladies Classic. And guess what? It's a dull running line. She didn't run well against the winner who came back to run third in the Azari with an 86 buyer speed figure, but her tactical speed is likely going to put her in a good spot. And once in a while, she will pop at a price and run a solid race. That's true. I, I can see her getting a, a good trip in this race, and I don't want to knock her too hard because it kind of feels like she will be double digit odds in here. Um, I just don't think she's very good. Then. I ne I've never thought she was very good, and I don't think that unless she catches some real breaks in there, I don't think she can beat this field. Perhaps the number seven curled girl will try to catch a flyer coming out of the gate. In her starts on dirt, especially going long, they've tried to get not only close, but outright on the lead. Her last two starts have come on synthetic, and they've taken her off of the pace. Maybe getting back to dirt and Keeneland dirt, where she earned her only victory, will help spur some improvement. But she'll have to really improve. She's eligible for a non-winners of two life race. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not going to be easy for her to beat this field, I don't think. Um, but she is a horse who I feel like is a little... Bit, if nothing else, she's a little bit of a wild card in here because you don't have to get too caught up in the two synthetic races off the layoff. Listen, they routed her on dirt twice last year. She ran well in both of those races, and she's got speed, uh, so she could get the right trip in this race. Um, I don't know. I thought she was a little interesting. I don't think I could ever better in here, Dan, but I think she's a little interesting. And she might be cycling back into her best form in her third start after a spring break. And the horse that beat her last time out is a really nice synthetic horse at Turfway. Came back to run third in the Latonia Stakes there with an 80 buyer. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time, Friday's race of the day. It's the double dog dare. We take a look at our top picks and... We're in agreement. We like the number four, love, but do you love her? Uh, yeah, I think this is a great spot for her. I, I wonder if this if this morning line is, is close to right and she'll be three to one here. I think that's a pretty good price on her. I would take it. Um, I'm most interested to see how the three Cilia runs in here, Dan. I just don't think I want a better uh, as the morning line favorite. Cilia might have the most upside potential long term of any of the horses in this race. I'm not sure I really want to take a very short price on her. I'm not sure she has a true edge over this field, but I do like Love's tactical speed. I trust Brendan Walsh off of the layoff. We'll see what we get from Raging C, who's shown some ability as well. 4312 for Mike, 4137 for me in a double dog dare on Friday at Keeneland. Best of luck.